let us discuss this interesting problem of pathfinder there is a rod of length l which is hinged here this is the hinge and there is a mass small ball very pointed kind of a mass m and it is initially given horizontal velocity only horizontal velocity will mean that we will push it certainly perpendicular to the rod and also that velocity is parallel to if i draw the plane this is z this is x and this is y so u is parallel to x z plane that is what is given we have to find at what angle theta since it is pivoted it is free free to move in vertical horizontal plane so let us not get confused with that complicated motion in physics we can solve many problems by work energy from one point to another point when we have conservative forces you need not analyze whole motion that is the advantage of conservative forces now when it falls down and it keeps on rotating so let suppose let us say initially one gets a deceptive look that it is rotating like this i will i am saying deceptive look because we have to see it in totality so and finally it is rotating and moving and it is coming here this is the final theta we have to find what is that final theta when the normal reaction n is zero we know that normal reaction is zero only when the forces are balanced so if the vertical forces forces mg so along the rod is mg cos theta final and there must be some force f to balance it to make the reaction zero so let, let that force f is equal to mg cos theta final now to find the force f this force f will certainly come because of the velocities it is going to be the centrifugal force only but let us see which velocities and what are those velocities i'll break this motion simply into the vertical plane i'll see only two planes one is the vertical plane which is rotating and the this is the horizontal plane and finally it comes here this is the final position of this plane this is the new plane which is which has emerged so when i am seeing the horizontal plane these are the horizontal planes and i'll also see the motion in the vertical plane just recall this groto problem i have put the solution but there i have done in great detail i have not broken it into two component two planes but groto the book solution is very good it does it in two plane and then it becomes very short i have also put up the solution but i have put up solution which is lengthy so that was intentionally done so that people are able to understand that part of the process also so in that way just keep those concepts in mind we can solve the problem by breaking the motion in different planes what is the possibility of motion of the ball ball will always have some velocity because it is pivoted so there is rotation about this point o so ball is rotating about this point o but the rotational planes are different so if we see initially though i am saying or this is the horizontal plane but if you see at t is equal to 0 the actual rotation axis is this always draw the rotation axis perpendicular to the rod whenever there is a hinge position so just start from the mass move along the rod draw a perpendicular to the rod and this is the rotational axis and this is the final rotational axis anyway i'm not going to use the rotational axis here but if the concept of angular momentum is there then this is the here this is these are the axis which are the rotational axis another rotational axis is z axis because the mass mg the force which is acting due to this mass mg is always providing a torque about z axis and the normal reaction interestingly is not providing any torque and these are not i am just discussing much larger larger concepts which are not required to solve this problem 
so somebody may say why i am wasting time i am just discussing some concepts for some people it may be waste of time somebody will say i can solve it in 2 minutes so theek hai everybody has its own way of solving it it can be done in short method also but i am discussing various concepts but coming back to the problem just coming back to the concept of breaking into planes so one plane is horizontal another is the vertical plane which is rotating but i am just taking the projections in that plane so if i see the projections in a vertical plane which is not fixed i am repeating so this is the projection in the vertical plane from theta 0 to theta f in that vertical plane you can simply apply the work energy theorem and you will get the velocity but please remember don't take the velocity like this you have to take the velocity in terms of the constraints the constraint is that the pivot and the rod so velocity which it acquires in this plane is always perpendicular to the rod so whatever final you can straight away apply work energy theorem and get this velocity v you can also do it by taking some angle theta at some point of time this theta it moves by d theta in this plane and distance moved is ld theta the force acting is mg downwards the component along the arc is mg sin theta so dw is mg sin theta into ld theta and this gives you the kinetic energy because this work done gives you the kinetic energy so mg sin theta ld theta theta 0 to theta final one is this method but straight away you can do in the vertical plane the distance which it has moved is initial height was l cos theta 0 and the final height is l cos theta final you will get the same result from this and straight this short method so kinetic energy is half v final square this is the v final which is perpendicular to the rod in the vertical plane is equal to m g h is how much l cos theta 0 minus cos theta final is the height fallen the with that method also you get but i would suggest this method because it may be useful in other problems so v final is nothing but twice gl v final square is twice gl cos theta 0 minus cos theta final now see what happens to you this v final is the velocity in the vertical plane which is perpendicular to the rod what is the other velocity another velocity u which was also given perpendicular to the rod was in horizontal plane and let us see what are the forces acting normal reaction n is always perpendicular to this u because u is in horizontal plane and the normal reaction is perpendicular to the velocity velocity is perpendicular to the normal reaction because velocity is perpendicular to rod and n is a long rod always so naturally the n is always perpendicular to the horizontal velocity in the horizontal plane so no work done by n let us see what is the other force mg is the other force mg is also perpendicular to the velocity u because velocity was in horizontal plane so even if it keeps on falling in the plane whatever is the velocity u mg is always perpendicular to the velocity u n is always perpendicular to the velocity u so velocity u remains constant in the velocity component of the horizontal plane remains constant so that u square is u square i am writing u square because i will be using the centrifugal force so the force is nothing but u square m common u square m upon l common u square plus vf square because these are two perpendicular velocities one is vf and uf is pointing into the plane at this moment and this is the centrifugal force and this is mg 
and this was mg and this was the rod so to find centrifugal force very easy because you know the two velocities which are perpendicular to the pivot about which it is rotating so one rotational axis i said was z another rotational axis is now this one don't take y as the rotation axis so this is z and another was this one so this is the force mg cos theta would be equal to this force for normal reaction 2 is 0 so u square plus v final square is twice g l cos theta 0 minus cos theta final m gets cancelled yeah, this is theta final actually g cos theta final is equal to u square upon l plus twice g cos theta 0 minus twice g cos theta final so cos theta final 3g cos theta final is u square upon l plus twice g cos theta 0 so answer should be cos theta final is equal to u square upon 3g l plus 2 upon 3 cos theta 0 if any error correct it